It's good to be back. Uh, welcome to everyone here. Uh, welcome to the visitors. Glad that you're here. Trust that you will be uh, blessed in worshiping with us this morning. Um, I, I want to say this. Yes, it is good to be back. You know, I, I don't know. I'm not sure when the last time was that um, we missed four Sundays in a row at Bethel, but it's been a while. <laughs> but anyhow, uh, uh, I want to thank you uh, for your prayers. Thank you for your support. Uh, many different ways, texts, phone calls, cards, food, just to name a few. So I want to thank you for that. Um, and again, it, I, I just, I, uh, yeah, I was just really blessed. And knowing that we have a body of believers that uh, cares about each other. So thank you for that. Um, I have been blessed in being here this morning so thus far. I have really been. I have, uh, we have worshipped already, have we not? Have you felt like you've worshipped in singing, in singing the songs that Freddie led, in, in the devotional that we heard? I thank you for that devotional. There's just a few verses. I just, I loved a few of these verses here. For who is God, save the Lord? Who is a rock, save our God? God is my strength, my power, and he maketh, maketh my way perfect. You know what? Even though we go through difficult times, God can make our way perfect because he's our rock. And he will walk with us, he will journey with us. And, and so what we've heard this morning up at this point is truth. It's truth. And let me tell you, truth will stand for how long? Somebody tell me. Forever. Truth will stand forever. My friends, throughout all eternity, truth will stand. And that's what we heard here this morning. Jesus himself said this. He said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. That's what Jesus said. My friends, that's truth. And my, my uh, interesting mark, you mentioned King Nebuchadnezzar, and you said he was a very arrogant, prideful, wicked man. King. He was. He was. And God, I like that, grass college. And when God done that work with him, he acknowledged God for who God was. And God restored his mind. Interesting, a man like that hit rock bottom, then he acknowledged God, and God restored him. You know what, there's, 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 there's many things, and we already heard of this, there's many things that are shaky today. Many things. What is solid ground? What is the rock? And again, I come back and I say, what we heard this morning up until this point is truth. And we again, we can stand on truth. Jesus said this to Thomas. He said, I am the way, I am the truth, and the life, and no, cometh, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. My friends, there's no other way to heaven but through Jesus Christ. Only through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the way the truth and the light and the life. And you know what? In just a few verses before that, in John 14, Jesus says this. He says, if I can lay my eyes on it here, it says, let not your hearts be troubled. There's many hearts that are troubled. There's many hearts that are fearing. There's many hearts that are aching today. Jesus says, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God Believe also in me. And then some verses later in the same chapter, he says this. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. My friends, there's a lot of answers right there. Jesus Christ is peace, and he wants to give us that peace. He says, don't let your hearts be troubled. Believe in me. That's what Jesus says. Believe in him. 
If we can put our faith in Jesus Christ, we can have peace. Peace. Faith. Faith in Jesus Christ. I'm going to be talking about faith this morning. What is faith? What, what is faith? What, what would you say that faith is? The dictionary tells us this. It says that faith is a complete trust or confidence in something or someone. I'm going to say this morning I want to talk about a faith in someone. A complete trust in, some, in someone. Hebrews 11 verse 1 says like this, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And my friends, we can put our faith, a complete trust in Jesus Christ, and our hearts will not need to be troubled, and we won't need to be afraid. We won't need to have anxiety. We won't need to have fear. Now, this morning for a message, in just a little bit here, we're going to turn to James. I've done a few messages out of the messages out of the book of James, and I want to turn back to that again. But before we go there, I, um, I'm going to ask you a question, a few questions. I told you we we're going to talk about faith, and I'm going to, I want to ask you a question, and to be, I'm going to be totally honest with you this morning. I, I read this, reread this passage of scripture in James chapter 2. I prayed about it, and, and the Lord gave me a message to, to preach, and I was like, God, really? Do you want, is that what you want me to preach this morning? It's too basic, it's too simple. That's what my thought was. And you know what? And then, the question that I'm going to ask you this morning, once I thought about this question, I thought, no, we need to ask ourselves this question. I need to ask myself this question. We need, everyone needs to ask himself this question. It's very basic. It's very simple. And this is the question I want to ask you. Are you saved? Are you saved? Pretty basic question, right? I mean, it is. It is. And I, and I actually, I kind of doubt it myself. I'm not going to preach I'm going to preach this passage of scripture about faith, and I'm going to start in about being saved. It was like, yes, do. My friends, if I think about being saved, let me, this is where I went with this, and this is what came to me as I was thinking about this. Are you saved? Let me, let me ask you this. What is the opposite of being saved? What is? We're lost. The opposite of being saved is being lost. Is it important that we talk about being saved? Amen. The opposite of being saved and lost is the opposite of heaven and hell. Is there a difference? My friends, there is. There's a difference. So that is why this morning, that's the first question I want to ask you. Are you saved? Are you saved here this morning? The next question I want to ask you is how? How? How or why? Then the next question I want to ask you is this question. Are you saved by faith alone? Whoa, now you're getting kind of tricky, right? Are you saved by faith alone? Or, or, Must we live in a way that glorifies God if we want to spend eternity with Him? Question again is this. Are we saved by faith alone or must we live in a way that glorifies God if we want to spend eternity with Him? We're going to talk about those three things this morning. Turn with me to James chapter 2. James chapter 2. Why don't we stand as we read a few verses here? I'm going to start in verse 14. James 2, verse 14. James 2, verse 14. And it starts in like this here. James 2, again, verse 14. It says, What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say 
he hath faith and have not works. Can faith save him? If your brother or sister is, I, I like this. Look what he does. And then he brings this in right away. And he said, if a brother or sister is naked or destitute of daily food, and one say unto them, depart in peace and be warmed and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, what does it profit? Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. Yea, any man may say, thou hast faith and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith with my works. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and they tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how wrought I'm going to say this. Another translation says like this here. Seeth thou how his actions and works work together? And by faith was faith, by works was faith made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled which saith, Abraham believed God. And it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And he was called a friend of God. Yea, see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she received the messengers and she sent them away. She sent them out another way. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Let's pray. Lord, we bow before you this morning. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for faith. We thank you that we can be saved through faith in you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for the work of the cross. And Lord, this morning I invite your presence here. I pray for guidance. I pray for direction. I pray for leading. As we look at this passage of scripture that talks about our faith, talks about our works. And so God, I just pray for guidance. I pray for leading. I pray that uh, what I want to share this morning would make sense. Lord, we praise you, we worship you, for you alone are worthy. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. So this morning, like I said earlier, I'm going to start with talking about being saved. And that's where my thoughts went when I read, after I read and reread this scripture about being saved. It talks about being saved by faith. So I'm going to begin there. And I'm going to have some very basic points on being saved. Again, the question, are you saved? Jesus said this to Nicodemus. In John 3, verse 7, he says, Marvel not when I say unto thee, Yea, must be born again. Yea, must be born again. We must be born again to be saved. No matter what you have done, God loves you. Loves you so much that he was willing to send his only son, his only begotten son, to die that painful, terrible death on the cross for your sins and for my sins. Because that's how much he loved us. And he's offering us that gift. My friends, it's a gift. That gift of salvation. That's what he's offering us. This morning, again, talking about being saved. I want to just ask you a few questions again. Are you tired? of living with sin in your life? Just a question. Do you feel lost? My friends, there's hope. Do you want to spend eternity in heaven with Jesus? All questions about being saved. Next question is sobering. I want to ask it. Are you afraid to die? Are you afraid to die? 
I'm going to share this. I don't have it in my notes. It comes to my mind, and I, 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 but I will. I talked to Brother Dwayne Shetler. I'm not sure if he's here this morning or not. But I talked to Brother Dwayne Shetler last Monday morning. And on Saturday night, he had a call. He's an EMT. And he had a call to go pick a victim up. Let me just put it this way. I'm not going to spend much time. But this victim, when he crawled in the back of that truck to go on a joyride, he never thought he would meet his maker there. You follow me? He never thought he would meet his maker within minutes. My friends, he did. He flew off the back of, tr- back of the truck, had a terrible head injury, passed away before they could get him to Millersburg Hospital. Never thought that his life would end so soon. I'm not sure, I'm not sure what his age was, low 20s. My friends... Again, we can have the assurance of salvation and we don't have to be afraid to die. Maybe you live a decent life avoiding, avoiding terrible sin, but you've never accepted Jesus as Lord of your life. My friends, is Jesus Lord of your life? Do you need just to acknowledge him as Jesus or is he Lord of your life? So I have a few steps this morning. And that again, like I said, it's so basic. I have like four steps I want to take you through about being born again. And the first one is this. Believe. Believe. Again, very simple, right? Believe. Believe that God is God. Believe that God loves you. Believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins. Believe that he died for your sins, but not he didn't stop in the grave. He rose again. Believe. Believe that. Believe that he will forgive all your sins if you ask him. Believe. The very first thing is believe. We need to believe. Jesus said this to Martha at the death of her brother Lazarus. Jesus said this to her, I am the resurrection and the life, and he that believeth in me, though he were dead, he shall live, meaning live as in an eternal life, and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die, again, eternal life. Then he asks her this question, Believest thou this? I ask you this question this morning. Believest thou this? Believe, do you believe in Jesus Christ? We need to believe. That's the first thing we must do. The second thing we must do, number two, is this. We must recognize that we are a sinner. We must recognize that we are a sinner. My friends, if I, if I am a sinner, if I... How do I want to word this? If I don't see myself as a sinful man, if I don't see myself as a sinful person... Person, why would I need a Savior? If I don't see that I'm sinful, I won't need a Savior. Why would I? So the first thing we need to do, the second thing we need to do, we need to recognize that we are a sinner. And no one is free from sin. We were born with a sinful nature. Romans 3.23, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So we must recognize that we are a sinner. Thirdly, we must repent. We must repent. Be truly sorry for all our sins. Have a sincere desire to be free of them. We must repent. And repentance means we are sorry and we will go a different route. We will go a different way. And let me, my, you know, to me, there's no better story of repentance than Paul saw at the time on Damascus Road. Going, going towards Damascus to kill the Christian people. He met his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, on Damascus Road, changed his life forever. 
from, what he, from where he was going to kill Christians, he became a Christian. He became a follower. And he turned and he went a different direction. My friends, that is repentance. That is true repentance. We must repent. Jesus said this. Well, it says this here in, in Matthew 4, 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Fourthly, we must pray. We must pray. Confess our sins to God. Ask Him to forgive our sins. Give our heart to to Christ. Ask Him to help us to be a new person. Promise Him that we will serve Him for the rest of our life. If we, 1 John 1 9 says this if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive our sins. And to cleanse us from what? From all unrighteousness. We must confess our sins. Pray and forget, for, for, confess our sins. And if we do that, 2 Corinthians 5.17 says this, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are are become new. And my friends, if we have taken these steps, if we have taken these steps and we believe, we recognize that we are a sinner and we repent and we pray and we ask Christ for forgiveness and we have done that in a sincere way, we can have the assurance that we are saved. That we are saved. We can have that assurance. The Bible tells us that. That we can have that assurance. Now. So. If we are saved. It doesn't stop there. Is that, is that, is that the end? Are we saved by faith alone? Must we live in a way that glorifies God if we want to spend eternity with Him? Let me read a few verses out of James again. James 2.14 What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works? Can faith save him? If your brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding ye give him not those things which are needful to the body, what does it profit? When James asks the question, Can faith save him? He's expecting a negative answer. He's expecting no. In these verses here, that man could have said, I have faith, but I have no compassion. I see a person very, very needy, but I have no compassion for that person. That's what these verses are saying. Is that good works? It is not. It is not good works. A faith that demonstrates itself in good work that does, I'm sorry, a faith that does not demonstrate itself in good works is not genuine. It is not genuine. Let me read verse 20. But thou, but wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works, is dead. Another translation says like this here. Do you want me, do you want to be shown, you shallow man, that faith apart from works is barren? If there's no works, it's barren. If there's no works, the faith is dead. 
Faith and works. And we'll get into this a little bit more. It's like two sides of a coin. There's faith on one side, and there's works on the other side. I do what I do because of what Christ has done for me. I don't, I don't work. I don't work to be saved. No, I have faith that I am saved. I have faith because of what Christ has done for me. But my faith does not mean that I live a life whatever pleases me. Why not? Why not? Who's Lord of your life? Who's Lord of my life? If, I, if Jesus Christ is Lord of my life, what does that make me? Someone would tell me, if Jesus Christ is Lord of my life, what am I? Am I a servant? Am I a servant? Yes. What does a servant do? Serves, right? Serves who? Is it okay to say his master? Who's Lord of your life? Who are you serving? Do works and faith go together? They do. They do. Martin Luther said like this here. This is in quote. It is as impossible to se separate works from faith as it is to separate a burning and shining from a fire. End of quote. Did you get what he said? If you have a campfire going and it's dark out, that campfire will make a light, right? Fire will make light and you can't separate it. You can't say burn but no light. It's impossible. You can't separate. That's what he said. If there is genuine faith, there will be works. Now, some people argue, well, works can't save you. I, right, they can't. Works alone cannot save us. They cannot save us. <laughs> works alone. If I don't have faith in Jesus Christ, I can still do good things. But my friends, if I don't have faith in Jesus Christ, and if I'm not born again like I talked about just a little bit ago, my works will not save me. I'm sorry, they will not. They will not save me. I can do many, many good works, but they will not save me. I can never earn salvation through good works. But true faith always produces good works because true faith motivates a person to please God. Charles Spurgeon said like this here. He says, in quote, the child of God works not for life, but from life. He does not work to be saved, but he works because he is saved saved. That's exactly right. He works because he is saved. A couple interesting verses in Ephesians. And in these verses we use a lot. And it says like this here. And I totally, totally agree. Listen to what it says. For by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourselves. Oh, true. For by grace are you saved through faith not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. That's grace, it's a gift of God. Then he says, not of works, least any man should boast. Huh. Not of works, least any man should boast. So true. If I could be saved by works, I could just do a lot of good, right? I could just, oh, I could just do a lot of good, care about people, do a lot of good. If I could just save, be saved by works. No, it's gra grace is a gift of God. And we believe it by faith. The interesting thing is this. Listen to the very next verse in Ephesians 2. 9 says, Not of works, least any man should, many, any man should boast. The very next verse says, For we are his, meaning Christ, we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto, unto what? Unto good works. There's the answer. 
We are, you lay my eyes on it here again. We are his workmanship. We are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works. And again, it's because of Jesus Christ that we can do good works. There again, let me just quote, I quoted this verse before. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things are new. We are a new creature, and we have a desire to serve who? Who's our master? We have a desire to be a servant of Jesus Christ, and we will have good works. Another interesting verse in this passage is this. Verse 19 and it says this, Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and they tremble. Wow. Wow. He says the devils also believe and they tremble. The devil's works far from good, right? They believe there's a God. They know that they're doomed. They know they will spend eternity in hell. There's no chance for the devil. But he believes there's a God, but he trembles. But he trembles. Verse 21 says, Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered his son Isaac upon the altar? You see, faith was active along with works. And faith was completed by works. And the scripture was fulfilled which said, Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness, and he was called a friend of God. Very, very interesting story there. I'm just going to touch on it just quickly here in the last few minutes. Because Why? Because Abraham... What was Abraham? Who was his master? God. Abraham was a servant of God. So who did he serve? God. And how did he serve him? By bad works or evil works? No, by good works. By good works. The story about him offering up Isaac, and I'm just going to quickly, just tell you quickly this story, but it's so interesting one day God says, Abraham. Abraham says, here am I. And God says this to him. Listen now. He says, and, and, and this is Isaac, his only son. And he was, prof- he was promised to have his, the generations after Abraham would be many and many, many. And God tells him this. Take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love. Go to, Mount, go to the land of Moriah. Offer him up as a burnt offering in one of the mountains which I will tell you. Wow. So, so Abraham is told to take his only son, the son that he loved, he is to take him and take him to another country, and he is to another country. I'm not sure about the country. Another area. And offer him up as a sacrifice. His only son, the son that he loved, what did Abraham do? Say, well, well I have faith. Uh, yeah, God, uh, but, but you know my faith. I, you don't really expect me to do that. He left. He left. The Bible tells us the next morning, he, he got his donkeys and two men and his son, and they split wood. They cut wood, and they took it, and they headed out towards the mountain where he was. And I don't think God told him at this time which mountain. I don't think so. But it says, now listen to this. Talk about faith. They traveled for three days. And after three days' journey, it says that Abraham lifted his eyes and he saw the mountain from afar off. Three days. Three days. What, what would be a three days' journey for us? I mean, he had, they traveled with donkey. I know mileage wouldn't be the same. But imagine, with, with our transportation today driving, we have what? Our son, we have firewood, we have a couple of our employees 
servants with us. And we travel three days. It's quite a distance, right? For Abraham, this was a distance. And after traveling three days, he saw the mountain. Then he tells his servants, he says, stay here. Just stay here. The son and I will go and worship. We'll go and worship. Then we're going to return again. Well, I, 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 I really... He says will return. He doesn't say we will return. He says will return. It's very interesting. I think he had faith, regardless of what happened here, that God, if he offered up his son, he would bring him back to whatever. He just had faith. And they left. And on the way up, this also interesting to us as fathers. Listen. On the, way up, on the way up the mountain, this young son must have been at worship services before. Because he says, Father, Abraham says, says, here am I. He says, I see fire. It says that Abraham had fire in his hand. I don't know how that was, and a knife. But he says, Father, I see fire and wood, but where's the lamb to, where's the lamb to offer? Where's the lamb that we're going to offer on the altar? Abraham says this, God, God will give us a lamb to offer. So they build an altar, put the wood on. Abraham is ready. Takes his, he's ready to slay his son to offer him as an offering. And a voice comes from heaven and says, Abraham, Abraham, not only once, twice, Abraham, Abraham, here am I. So don't, don't, don't do anything to your son. Now we know that you fully trust in me. That's what he says. That's what God says. Abraham again looks around and there's a, as we know, a ram with his horns stuck in the, in the brush. He gets that ram and God provided the offering. The faith of Abraham. The faith in his God, and yet, and yet he carried through with good works. Abraham was a servant of God. Abraham served his God. And if we are born again followers of Jesus Christ, who's our master? Jesus. Who do we serve? Jesus, how do we serve him? With good works. Does that make sense? Faith and good works go hand in hand. They go hand in hand. If Jesus is Lord of our life, we'll have faith in him. We are not saved by good works. We are saved for good works. And that is the title of my message today. Saved for good works. Stand with me to pray. Lord, we bow before you today. We thank you. We praise you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the promises of your word. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that we can have our faith or trust in you. We thank you that we can call you Lord of our life. And we thank you that we have the opportunity to serve you, that we can be your servant. We thank you for that. We thank you for blessing us so richly, Lord, with with truth, truth of your word, something that we can build our life on. We thank you for that, Lord Jesus. Jesus, again, uh, help us to acknowledge you as Lord, acknowledge you as King, acknowledge you as uh, our Master, and help us to serve you. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated.